Hello everyone, I'm Eternal Flame here, and welcome to a versus battle that I'm not entirely sure how many people are actually going to want to watch, I'll be honest with you, but I always find this to be one of the most interesting Jujutsu Kaisen versus battles that's not really talked about much, because like, one of these characters are not too popular, and the other character was dead for a while, which this versus battle is going to be between Nanami and Kusakabe. Now, while I could do the other more popular topic of Nanami versus Meimei, I want to talk about Nanami versus Kusakabe instead, because I feel they're very comparable, but of also being on the opposite side of the spectrum for when it comes to the general debate and people's general opinion on this fight. Which is why I'm actually making this video today to share my opinion on this fight, who wins, and their general scaling, and just more importantly, why this fight in general is such a weird topic that I think should be talked about more. However, before we even get into this video, be sure to like and subscribe again my content like this, and let's get straight into this. Now, the reason why I think this is an interesting topic is because this is a beautiful case in Jitsu Kaisen of feats versus narrative. Because this doesn't really exist all too often, the only other characters that I can think of where this type of debate actually exists for feats versus narrative is Jogo versus Mahito. However, that's like an entirely different video topic for another day that I don't feel like covering here. So, yeah. Yeah. However, let's get straight into this. Thankfully for Nanami and Kosakabe, we don't actually have to look at too much because they actually have a similar character that they scale to both of them, which makes it a lot easier to do this entire video, which that character is Start of Shibuya Yuji Itadori. Now, the reason that both these characters have direct scaling to that Yuji is because they both have a statement from pretty credible sources directly comparing Yuji to them, where Meimei directly upon seeing Yuji complete and finish off the Grasshopper Curse Spirit, she says she's never seen someone without a curse technique get this far since Kusakabe. Meanwhile, when Ino directly sees Yuji's direct physical striking strength, he directly compares him to Nanami and says Yuji is just as strong or stronger than Nanami in terms of striking strength. Now you might be thinking, okay, these statements are pretty similar, so that should just put Kusakabe and Nanami on a very similar level, right? Well, yes and no, because there's something really interesting about the statement for Kusakabe in comparison to the statement for Nanami, where the statement for Nanami is a direct comparison between Nanami and Yuji, which from someone who's directly seen Nanami fight in combat basically saying that Nanami is at this level on par directly with Start of Shibuya Yuji. Meanwhile, the statement for Kusakabe, while it does directly put Kusakabe on that level, it's more so a floor for how strong Kusakabe is rather than a ceiling. Now, you might be wondering, what do I mean by that? Well, the statement is, Meimei hasn't seen anyone get this strong without a curse technique since Kusakabe. This doesn't exactly mean, though, that Kusakabe is on par with Start of Shibuya Yuji. What this means, though, is that Kusakabe is the only one Meimei has ever seen achieve this level of strength without a curse technique. And while you could interpret Ino's statement as only talking about Nanami's base strength and not including Nanami's ratio technique in there, Kusakabe has a lot better feats in comparison to Nanami. And this is where we're going to get into the feats versus narrative that I talked about early on in this video, now that we got the one statement of comparison directly out of the way between Nanami and Kusakabe. Now, while Nanami does have feats like taking care of several transfigured humans, beating the ever-living hell out of Haruta, and finally fighting against Dagon, albeit not really being able to damage Dagon, but that's more so because of the massive amount of HP that Dagon has, Nanami's best scaling still is directly to scaling to early Shibuya Yuji, because I would put him above the likes of Maki and a bunch of other people, especially considering how far early Yuji scales. That allows Nanami to be able to do things like damage Hanami quite a bit, because this Yuji far exceeds the power that previous Yuji was at, where he could damage Hanami to begin with after landing the first Black Flash. I have an entire video going over how strong Yuji is and Nanami just directly scales to early Shibuya Yuji. However, like I mentioned when I was talking about the statement, while it's clear that this statement is just the best scaling you can actually give Nanami, I do want to make this clear, I'm only talking about his strength, speed, power, as well as curse technique, potency, and all of that good jazz. I'm not actually talking about Nanami's battle IQ or battle tactics. I think Nanami would beat early Shibuya Yuji because they're basically similar stats characters, but just Nanami is much more battle IQ and much more battle smarts. This is just the best scaling you can give Nanami. Meanwhile, this is only the floor of the scaling for what you can give for Kusakabe. Now up first is Kusakabe dodging a maximum meteor, which I mean, I'm not gonna say it's impressive purely because as I've said before, Panda dodged Maximum Meteor, and Panda is by no means a fast character in Jutsu Kaisen whatsoever. So, yeah, that's not really an impressive feat. But do you want to know what is an impressive feat? Let me just talk about this, because no one actually really talks about how impressive Kusakabe deflecting Maximum Uzumaki 
into the ground actually is. So let me just give you guys some context, right? Miwa just broke her sword directly against Kenjaku, and Kenjaku is about to use a point-blank Maximum Uzumaki, which has Mahito's essence infused into it, because this is how he uses Mahito's curse technique, because he needs to use it through Maximum Uzumaki. So this is a Maximum Uzumaki with Mahito infused into it, plus whatever else curse spirit is infused into the Maximum Uzumaki, we don't really know, but we at least know it's Mahito plus, so that's about to launch at Miwa, and it's almost point blank directly into her face until Kusakabe appears out of nowhere, he's nowhere to be seen, and he uses New Shadow Style Bato Sword Drawing in order to deflect it into the ground and make a giant crater, while also getting a compliment directly from Kenjaku. And it's only after it's deflected does Miwa actually realize that it's Kusakabe? And you might be wondering, okay, Miwa's not that strong, why am I mentioning Miwa? Well, there's one thing that needs to be noted. Miwa is able to perceive and directly fight against Maki. And while you might be able to argue that Maki got stronger from the Goodwill arc, I would argue the same thing for Miwa. But, Kusakabe is still able to just appear out of nowhere and just deflect it before it can even hit her point-blank rage. And only after does Miwa actually realize it was Kusakabe. Which, by the way, Maki is someone who's relative enough in speed to Nanami directly. I'm not saying that Kusakabe off this feat alone should be able to blitz Nanami, because I don't think that's the case. I just think Kusakabe is shown to be much faster than Nanami's feats perceive him to be. Then there's also Kusakabe sparring with post-time skip training Yuji, who that Yuji is much stronger in comparison to the Yuji that Nanami directly scales to, but I'm not even going to include that purely because it's kind of weird to talk about as a debate in general. We don't really know how that fight went. It's just super weird. And there's just a pretty good chance Kusakabe over those 19 Tays did get strong enough to spar against this current Yuji, but it's just super weird to talk about in general. And a common argument I hear against Kusakabe's entire deflection feat is Kusakabe only deflected Maximum Uzumaki into the ground. You didn't destroy it. That does remove some things from the feat, but not really, because that means Kusakabe is still strong enough to directly deflect it into the ground. You still need to be relative enough in strength in order to deflect a projectile into the ground. It's not as impressive because Kusakabe is not stronger than the Maximum Uzumaki, but it is still strong enough to deflect it into the ground nonetheless. Now you might be thinking this. If Kusakabe's feats and Kusakabe's statements just allow him more leeway and just better scaling than what Nanami's does, why do so many people end up ranking Kusakabe as lower than Nanami, for example? And that is for one very good reason, and that's what I like to call narrative patrol. And this is where I'm going to get into the narrative section of this video, because if you can't tell, going off feats, Kusakabe should win. However, if we're going to go off narrative, the narrative gives a very, very different impression about what Kusakabe and Nanami's strength levels are in comparison to what the feats do. I'm going to start out with Kusakabe first, I start out with Nanami previously. Kusakabe in the narrative is depicted as a complete coward. While he's respected for his achievements, he's also depicted as someone who downplays himself, underestimates himself, and doesn't think he'd be of any use or any help against people like Special Great Curses, showing general fear and lack of desire to fight against them, when he's shown with Panda just trying to avoid fighting them at all costs, and being more happy to fight weaker sorcerers that he could toy around with rather than going to directly fight someone like Mahito, Jogo, etc., considering himself an ant in comparison to them. All of his feats, though, give off a completely different impression. For example, if Kusakabe was in the Dagon domain, he should have been more useful than Nanami would have been in this fight, even though the narrative gives off a completely different impression, purely because of how much of a high regard Nanami is actually held up in the narrative in comparison. For example, when Nobara directly sees Nanami destroy Haruta, Nobara considers Nanami the peak of what a grade 1 sorcerer should be capable of. Or another example, Nanami is held as the mentor figure, someone to be surpassed in the future by both Megami and Yuji, but he is also held to a high regard. While not held to the same level as someone like Gojo, he is still held as an achievement to reach nonetheless. Or him being the one who was previously holding the Black Flash record until Yuji ended up breaking it. Nanami is just held as a highly regarded sorcerer, someone who's not afraid to risk his life to protect other people. And he just, in general, looks incredibly strong because of his lack of fear and willingness to fight against stronger creatures in comparison to someone like Kusakabe, who while Kusakabe should be more capable of it than Nanami is, he is still more afraid and doesn't want to do it, especially against monsters like the Disaster Curses. However, this also is a very interesting case of the narrative not depicting what the feats had intended for them. For example, I believe Gege actually did want for Nanami to be stronger than Kusakabe. 
despite the fact the feats lead the other way around, I think Nanmi was intended to be this pinnacle of grade 1 sorcery who unfortunately got cut off because of the nature of just how power cliffing functions in general, where a lot of characters ended up getting power cliffs because they continued to live on, they showed more impressive feats against more impressive characters, while the weaker characters still provide links back to the older characters, and that is simply how power scaling actually functions. Where older statements end up getting surpassed by the newer generation and newer scaling as the story continues, because previous achievements and previous challenges can no longer be shown as impressive because the characters have already overcome them. Thus, the side cast has to end up evolving with them in order to make sure the power line always increases and there's always still stakes to the narrative. For example, the finger bearer is no longer at all impressive. The finger bearer wasn't impressive after season 1 was done after Megami surpassed it using his domain expansion, being the last of the three main characters that needed to catch up to that level. If you were to put a finger bearer in modern day or even in the Shibuya arc of Jutsu Kaisen, a large amount of characters would be able to deal with the finger bearer. A similar case happens with Nanami, where while I believe the Nanami and the finger bearer for examples were intended to be stronger in the narrative, it's just the feats end up leading it the other way around because they just get outscaled. Because while I do think Gege does actually think about power scaling in his narrative, I don't think it's to the degree that we think about it. For example, I don't think he was thinking that making Kusakabe able to perform this feat would put him that much stronger than Kenjaku, but I did want to talk about this nonetheless. And also, if you're wondering how a fight between Kusakabe and Nanami would go, even if Kusakabe and Nanami were in similar stats, Kusakabe would win, purely because New Shadow Style is a really good counter to Nanami's abilities since they're both close-range fighters, and Kusakabe can land the first strike, which kind of just gives him the win against him. However, I am kind of curious what you guys lean closer towards. Do you guys think the narrative has more importance and the general narrative that Gage was trying to give or the feats have more importance, or do you guys think I'm just scaling Kusakabe completely wrong and he's much weaker than I actually think he is? I'm kind of really curious what you guys think in the comments section down below. I'm gonna see y'all later. Peace out. Hope y'all have a good day.